Welcome to Violin Adventures number 126. This week we finish up the ancient violin, play it, and then ship it out. All right, we're gonna take the clamps off of this violin. Okay, now that we've got the top on, it's time to fit the neck. Okay, setting a neck can take all day long. It just depends on your instrument and uh, sometimes it takes me a couple hours, sometimes it'll take me all day. And the reason being that, first of all, you have to cut a dovetail in the top here and then you have five dimensions that need to all come together everyone exact you don't want to have one off and all the others correct or two correct and all the others wrong you want all five dimensions to come together exactly and that's what takes so long and we do tiny tiny adjustments until all of those dimensions come right now you're probably wondering what are the dimensions or what are the five well of course it has to be centered down the middle of the instrument based on the middle seam. Uh, there has to be a certain height from the top of the fingerboard to, to the top of the instrument. There has to be a certain height here uh, between the top, the top of the instrument and the top of the neck right here. And that's three. Then there's a dimension from here to here, that's four. And the fifth one, oh, is the angle of the board, the fingerboard, it should not be straight on, it should have a tip, with the G string being a little higher than the E string. So all of those dimensions need to be there. Okay, I've been working on getting this in here just right, and one of the things is centering the fingerboard to the center uh, seam on this violin, which is really hard to find. It is very hard to see where that center seam is, which makes it very hard to center it. So I'm gonna use some measurements and try to determine where that might be and, and then put some tape down so that I don't have to keep measuring. But, just a note about old violins, we can get them as close as possible to the standard, which we have now. But there was no standard during this time. Um, our standards were, I think we settled on a standard dimensions in the 1800s. In the, okay, no, the, this is not glued up. I've been working on fitting all the dimensions and something that you can get all the dimensions right and then the fit on the back of the button may not be perfect and so you've got to keep working so I just put this in here to hold it because I realize you know when we get this ready we got to have a brand new set batch of glue so that this will be a permanent hold nice strong glue so that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to take a break on this and go get some hide glue ready to go. And it takes me about three hours to get a good batch of hide glue ready. Okay, it's time to put the neck on. We've got all the dimensions working and we got new glue. We want nice strong glue for this. Do a little work on the new violin. I want to get this as smooth as possible. Try to find any little bumps in here before I put the neck on because it will be a little harder to scrape it with the neck on. So I'm taking some time to smooth this out. Okay. 
Okay, I've been working on this violin, just going around the edges and trying to smooth them out and make everything look nice. Get Back to the old violin. Taking off the clamp. So we're going to trim down the button now and get a bridge and pegs and get this set up. And now we're ready to set up with our new bridge. And here's our box where I keep the, all the parts. So this violin has really woken up. It had a beautiful tone, but it didn't have the power and strength behind the tone. And it being such an old violin, but it has new life with the new bass bar and, and filling in all those wormholes, we, it now has its life back. to really play it in a big hall and I think it will carry
full of life. It's very fun to play. Every note seems to be alive. So I hope you enjoy this. I'm going to get it all packaged up and send it back. Taking a peek outside. Okay, it's Friday afternoon and I had to come down to the creek and find out what these little bright colors are. Look at that. Here the grass hasn't been mowed yet and it's just these beautiful blue flowers all over it and that's what we get where we call it the blue grass. Otherwise the creek is flowing nicely. Okay, it's a cold Friday afternoon. Let's get inside where it's warm. Okay, here's the shop. It's pretty quiet today. Let's see where we are. Here's the violin table. Our nice old ancient violin is now shipped out and on its way back to its owner. Okay, I spent some time just cleaning up all the workbenches so they're all ready for next week. Here's our new violin. This week I just spent going around the edges and trying to make everything look good. We're just about ready to get the neck on. I've also been cleaning up the scroll. I'm pretty happy with it now. It's looking pretty good, so we'll get ready to uh, finish this up next week. Freddie wants to chat. Hi, I I'm Freddie, and I, I want to tell you something, okay? So, I I I'm, I'm holding my, my violin right here because I I I'm working on how to make a violin. And so, this week, we're working on... Here, I'll, I'll show you, okay? Just a minute. Here we go. Here, here we go. See, I, I got my apron on and, and I'm ready to work. So, we're working on this new violin. We're getting it all cleaned up and nice and smooth. And I, I'm also working on this new scroll. And next week, we're going to put it all together. There, did you like that? And... And now I, I got some really good pictures from one of you guys out there. W one of my friends asked, one of my friends sent me some more pictures of what they're working on, and and it's really fun. So thank you for sending those pictures, and I'll show them to you right here. These are project photos sent from Tim for Freddie. The electric motor has an internal clutch that disengages when you pull down the wooden lever and will allow the one and one quarter shaft to turn. The shaft will be mounted on the green welded brackets up near the ceiling. The line shaft will be 12 feet long and will power a metal lathe, a power hacksaw, a drill press, and a bench grinder from one motor. No real practical reason for doing this. I just like the old line shaft shops with all their monkey motion. This will be an ongoing project with lots of searching for flat belt pulleys, lathe work, and head scratching. And that is sent to us from Tim. Well, next week I I'm going to learn how to put the neck on the new violin. So you have to tune in so you can see me doing that. Okay? And, and I think that's it now. So uh, thank you for sending in your pictures. And if you guys have more projects out there that we can see, then please send them in so I can see them. Okay? All right. And now, goodbye. The Hebrew Minute. Va'ata Chazak, Zerubbabel, Naum Hashem. These are a bunch of names he's talking to, and then we go over here. V'chazak Ko'am Ha'aretz, Naum Hashem, 
va'asuki ani itkem na'um hashem. So this says, you be strong, O Zerubbabel, declares the Lord. And then he tells other people to be strong. So we're going to jump over here. And it says, And be strong, all the you people of the land, declares the Lord, and work or do, because I am with you, declares the Lord. So, if you know where this verse is found, please leave it in the comments below. Thank you so much to all you new subscribers. Thank you to all of you who are chatting in the comments below. I love talking to you. And thank you for all the thumbs up. And thank you for spreading the word. And until next time, God bless you. Bye.